Hello, my babies. Welcome back to another Modern League. This week we're playing budget-ish Lantern Control. The whole list is about 160 ticks, down from between three and 400 ticks because we're not playing any Urza Sagas and we're not playing any Mishra's Bobbles and they're both expensive on Moda. The list is on the screen now and in the description below and I'll see you in the games. All right, round one of playing Lantern Control in Modern. We won the die roll. This hand seems all right. We will keep it. We've got Lantern Codex Shredder, so that's good. We're still looking for an Ensnaring Bridge and at least one more land so that we can play it. But we have some early game interaction too, so that's kind of nice. I've done one practice match with this deck so far, but it was very convincing, so I decided to go ahead and try for a league. Our opponent mulligans to six. Also, I just got a uh, new microphone. Hopefully you can tell. I think it sounds much better. It's in Elgato Wave 3, so hopefully I won't need to buy new sound equipment anytime soon because it was kind of expensive, but I'm very satisfied so far. All right, let's go. Spire of Industry, Lantern of Insight. Our opponent's playing a burn deck, okay. So we're definitely gonna need to find Ensnaring Bridge relatively quickly, or at least most likely, but we can kill their things. They're not playing Lurus. Which is sort of interesting. I wonder what that means for us. They could just be playing an outdated version of the deck, but... I'd be more willing to guess that they're playing... Maybe Bone Crusher Giant or something. Opponent attacks us with Goblin Guide. We do not get a land. Alright, I think I just prismatic ending the goblin guide immediately. We drew a surgical. Oh, or we have a surgical on top of our deck. Let's see. Codex Shredder. Kinda thinks about it. We will end your goblin. We've got one more kill spell. We might just be able to make them flood for a while, but we'll see. I don't like that we have Spire of Industry instead of Glimmer Void right now. I would much rather have... Much rather have something that doesn't deal us damage. Opponent has another land on top of their deck, so we're probably leaving that alone and just milling Surgical Extraction here. Because again, I don't really want to shock myself. So, Pithing Needle names one of the draw lands, most likely. What is that one called? They might be playing the Boros one and also the. Is it one? But they're almost for sure playing at least the Boros one, so I'm looking up what that one's called. It is Sunbaked Canyon. Okay. So we're gonna Pithing Needle Sunbaked Canyon. They probably don't have that many things in their deck that are good needle targets anyway. Put a place Monastery's Foe Spear. That's fine by me. Opponent attacks for one. Do they bolt us? They do not. Opponent plays. I assume light up the stage. They, okay, they rift bolt.
All right, I'm going to mill my surgical extraction because I don't want it. We're going to draw a Llanowar Wastes. Okay. Play Llanowar Wastes. Let's play Pyrite Spell Bomb. Let's Shock Monastery Swift Spear. Cast Ancient Stirrings. Stirrings gets Ensnaring Bridge. Beautiful. Any order? Pass the turn. Our opponent draws a land again. We get Rift Bolted. We have another Codex Shredder on top of our deck. I think we're in a really good spot now. Alright, we take three, we're at 12. Opponent has another land on top of their deck. My god, they're getting very unlucky with this. We've had the combo since turn two and we haven't had to use it at all to actually help, to actually, uh, help stop our opponent from killing us. Opponent plays a land, it enters tapped, it's fine by me. Opponent lava spikes us, that's fine. I don't think we know either of the cards that are in their hand. We draw Codex Shutter, we don't really want to draw the Thought Seize, so I'll probably mill that. I'm going to go ahead and get Ensnaring Bridge down. What the fuck? God damn it. <laughs> fuck. All right. Well, that went not according to plan. All right, so Spellskite, Leyline. Let's get rid of a couple of Thought Seizes, and by a couple, I mean all of them. Let's get rid of, I guess, the Surgical. Try it like that. Hmm. This could be terrible or great. I'm leaning towards terrible, I'm gonna mulligan it. This hand also doesn't seem the best, but... So we get rid of Llanowar Wastes. We could have some life gain pretty quickly. Sadly, we don't have a ley line. Yeah, so what just happened was very silly. Uh, My opponent fetched at the end of my turn, and I didn't have an upkeep uh, stop set, so I didn't get a chance after they fetched to mill the burn spell that was on top of their deck, despite the fact that I had like seven. 
7 mil effects. So that was slightly BS, but oh well. I have an upkeep stop set on my opponent now. <laughs> In case it ever becomes relevant again. Opponent plays a Bloodstained Mire, gets a Sacred Foundry. Shocks it in. I assume they play a creature here. But we'll see. But it plays. But it suspends a Rift Bolt. Okay. Perhaps the least scary turn one play that Burn has. We draw a concealed courtyard. Okay. Well, that's Ancient Stirrings. What do we see with Ancient Stirrings? We see a whole bunch of lands. Yikes. Alright, let's play... Let's get Blooming Marsh. That's unfortunate. I was kind of counting on that. Uh, getting a Lantern or an Ensnaring Bridge for us, but... What happens, happens, I guess. Opponent Rift bolts us. Yep. Yep. Opponent plays a land, plays Monastery Swiss Spear, okay. Tax us for one. We take one. Opponent passes, interesting. We're gonna mill. We get a lightning bolt, because we're good at the game. We draw a ley line of sanctity. Okay. I think that means I play Concealed Courtyard and Prismatic End, Monastery Swift Spear. And then next turn I can play ley line of sanctity. And that at least helps us. Although we're still vulnerable to our opponents either finding a way to blow it up, which they probably brought in wear and tear or whatnot. Or our opponent just attacking with creatures. Opponent plays a Sunbag Canyon, because we're geniuses. Plays a Goblin Guide, that makes me feel sad. Opponent attacks us, what do we see? We see a Lantern of Insight on top, okay. Yeah, I don't see a point in milling Lantern. So I'm going to play Inventor's Fair, Leyline of Sanctity here, and then next turn I can worry about playing Lantern. That seems fine. Let's mill our opponent again. reason we're doing this is in case we ever draw a Surgical Extraction, we want to stock their graveyard pretty well. They're not going to use anything out of their graveyard anyway because they're not playing that kind of burn deck. And hopefully we can just kind of coast like this for a little while. Let's see if they have any burn spells to toss at us. I assume they will, but maybe not. They might like Boros Charmus or something since they have two mana. We'll see. Once I play Lantern, we'll have three artifacts, so we'll start gaining one life a turn off in Venner's Fair, and then it'll feel like Goblin Guide is just hitting us for one a turn. So that's kind of nice, I guess. But that still kills us fairly quickly, compared to how quickly we kill them, at least. Opponent. Boros charms us, yep. 
Yeah, I'm really upset at myself for misplaying in game one. Definitely should have won that game. I had like, I think I had either six or seven millstones, and then I had two lantern of insights just in case I needed I needed to make my opponent shuffle. So there was like no way that they were going to be able to get through that reasonably. So we're at eight. We're about to go down to six. Yeah, things are bad. I need to either be able to kill this goblin guide or play ensnaring bridge very quickly. If we get another land, we can tutor with Inventor's Fair at least. So even if we flood for a little while, we in theory can get our ensnaring bridge and then hopefully try to get a lock from there. But they have a lot of cards that are problems for us and we haven't looked at their hand or controlled their top decks at all yet this game. And it's already turn four. Although I've gotten really lucky, really lucky with uh, Codex Shutter Mills. Because I've gotten just spells so far. Whenever our opponent attacks us with Goblin Guide, if they don't show us a land, I can at least use my Codex Shredder to make a decision about if I want that as my top deck or not. So we'll see. Attacks us for two. There's a Talisman on top. We are milling that because it's not an Ensnaring Bridge or a removal spell. What's happening? Our opponent can get some extra damage and still with Boros Charm making a Goblin Guide double strike, so... This is very scary still. Especially since they chose to Boros Charm us instead of burning us with other stuff, it makes me think that they might have another Boros Charm somewhere in there. Maybe not if they're just letting this go through, though. So, we'll see. Alright, I'm gonna mill myself. This draw step's got to count. Alright, fingers crossed. Yes! Alright. <laughs> Let's play Lantern. Don't get too excited now. They've got Artifact and Enchantment Removal in their deck somewhere. I'm sure of it. But that is exactly the thing we wanted to draw our opponent. Smash to Smithereens Codex Shredder. That's terrible news. Alright, let's mill you again. Oh, yeah, that's bad news. Because now we're down to three. If our opponent has another smash, we're dead. We both have lands on top, that's sort of good at least. Alright, let's just fade artifact removal for a while. And enchantment removal, please. No good draws for our opponent. That's what I want. No good draws. Skewer doesn't currently matter. Opponent plays Sacred Foundry tapped. If they don't kill us this turn, they did not kill us this turn. Okay. So we're safe for now. We'll be able to see when they top deck something. We gain a life with Inventor's Fair. Yes. We draw Lanoar Wastes. We play Lanoar Wastes. Pass the turn. Probably going to use Inventor's Fair to go get a Codex Shredder. Our opponent gets a skewer. Opponent has another skewer on top and passes. Alright, let's tutor up a codex shutter. Start trying to take control again. Our opponent is still down on time, so that's good news. We get to draw a surgical extraction so that can get smashed to smithereens. Alright, cool. Our opponent concedes. Alright, thank god we didn't lose that one. We're at least going to game three and I can hopefully redeem myself for the humiliating loss in uh, the first one. Because <laughs> that was rough. 
So they have smashes. That makes me think welding jar might be correct. But what would I take out for it? Prismatic endings in. All these have to stay in. Maybe I get rid of like one of the talismans. For like a welding jar. I like having surgical as a one of, it's pretty nice. Oh, I can get rid of pithing needles, that's what I can get rid of. I can get rid of one pithing needle and... Because they're kind of nice, but they don't hit a lot. Let's just get rid of one pithing needle, add in a welding jar. Try it like that. I still like being able to pithing needle their lands, especially since a fetch land is what essentially lost me the game in game one. I don't have colored mana, but I do have leyline and ensnaring bridge. And if I'm really in a pinch, I guess I can ghost quarter for something, but I don't need colored mana in this hand currently either. Let's keep it, see what happens. Put Leyline into play. Let's see what happens. Pen plays a mountain. Pen plays a goblin guide in main phase two for some reason. We draw a swamp. Okay. We are on the way to having mana fixing. Let's play Codex Shutter. Pass the turn. We get like a pseudo scry between Goblin Guide and Codex Shredder. And then also I can just point Codex Shredder at my opponent and then maybe surgical something if I mill something juicy. Oh fuck. Eidolon. Okay. So we need to get rid of that pretty quickly. If I get a red source I can kill it with pirate spell bomb so that's good news. We have a Pithing Needle on top. Yeah, I'm going to mill that. Don't want Pithing Needle right now. It's not the time. I'd rather get a Glimmer Void or a Spire of Industry. We draw. Collective Brutality. That works. So we can go Academy Ruins. Collective Brutality. Hmm. Two modes because pirate spell bomb is probably not going to be useful anytime soon, and we have academy runes anyway. Target creature gets neg two, neg two. Opponent reveals their hand. Reveal hand, neg two, neg two, and then I can surgical the idol on next too. That seems like a good deal. Ditch pirate spell bomb. We take two down to sixteen, but that's not the end of the world at least. And then next turn we can play Ensnaring Bridge and Goblin Guide can't hit us anymore. Let's get rid of Boros Charm. Okay, opponents just got burned. They don't have any removal. Uh, let's stop during their draw step. See if they draw a... Uh, we'll get to see one more card that they drew at least. And if they draw an Eidolon we can randomly get that. Get those Eidolons out of there. Oh, we did that during upkeep. I'm an idiot. I'm terrible at this game. Why are you watching me? <laughs> Opponent draws. Hopefully nothing important. Opponent plays Inspiring Vantage. That was their draw for turn. Because they have a Sacred Foundry, I believe, also. We have a prismatic ending on top. I will mill prismatic ending. So I don't really need that. Especially since I can't cast it. <laughs> we draw a ley line. Well, we really can't cast that, but. Let's play in snaring bridge, pass the turn. We need to draw a lantern now. If we draw a lantern, we have a pretty decent lock on the game. I'm just going to be milling my opponent with Codex Shredder in the meantime, I think. 
opponent has another land. That's fine. We mill a skull crack. We draw a talisman. We'll play talisman. Pass the turn. I'm just glad it wasn't something that we couldn't cast because we'd start getting hit with a uh, goblin guide again, and that would be really unfortunate. In a second, we'll be able to, if we're in a pinch, get Collective Brutality back with Codex Shredder, so that could be nice. I'm most likely just going to wait until we get Lantern Lock, though, with it. Opponent has something to play. Opponent plays a Monastery's Foot Spear. They can hit us with that. That's unfortunate. So we need to get rid of this Ley Line in our hand now. So I might wind up using Codex Shredder into Collective Brutality to get rid of this Ley Line of Sanctity and gain some life. Which gets us a bit further away from having a lock, but... I'm glad I got that Boros Charm out of the hand earlier. And, then it, and they can only bolt themselves so many times to uh, pump up Monastery Swiss Beer. We mill our opponent. We get a lava spike. We draw a glimmer void. Okay. We still don't have double white, but we might soon, so I'll pass. Well, either way, I'm gonna activate. Codex Shredder at end of turn to kill this Monastery Swift Spear because I have a Glimmer Void, which means I can activate Academy Ruins and put... Actually, I can just put Pirate Spell Bomb into my hand if I really want to. Hmm. I'll see how it goes. Or Prismatic Ending, I guess, is safer. We take some amount of damage to Monastery Swiss Spear. Yep. Just one this time. We return Prismatic Ending. Draw Pixis. Okay. Let's get rid of Monastery Swift here. Fuck! Alright, well, I'm salty. <laughs> Fuck. Alright, I ran out of time. I misplayed in game one. I established a lock in all three games. But... I'm pretty salty now. I'm not gonna lie. Alright, round two of Lantern Control in Modern. We won the die roll again, so that's nice. This hand is medium, but it has thought sea surgical, and that's really funny. So I'll keep it. Um, I'm going to try to play faster compared to the last game I was playing. Because I'm kind of upset that I wound up losing that. Okay, Counterspell, Prismatic End, and Spreading Seas. Do I want Counterspell or Prismatic End? I think I'd take Prismatic End and Surgical it. because then they just never have Prismatic Ends again. That seems like a pretty good deal. Fuck your Prismatic End. It's gone now. They drew another land. They have... Cauldra Complete as a threat. They have... One Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Three Teferi Time Ravelers that can remove things. 
They have three Archmage's Charms, which could be moderately annoying. Okay, this is just a stock blue-white deck. We need to draw non-land things. We drew Pithing Needle. They have... The Scalding Tarn. I think I just named Teferi Time Raveler, though, with this. Let's go... Spire of Industry. Codex Shredder. Pithing Needle. Name Little Teferi, since there's a little bit more of those. Alright. And I think I'm just going to, like, aggressively mill my opponent with Codex Shredder for a little while. I don't have an Academy Ruin, so there's not much point in milling myself. And if I randomly hit... Okay, that's fine. If I randomly mill their 5 mana Teferi, that's great. Mill to Flooded Strand, that doesn't matter so much. Let's play Ghost Quarter. Let's pass the turn. I'll leave Inquisition for when I try to resolve something since I know they have a counterspell. Mill you. Untap. We draw Ensnaring Bridge. Alright, let's try to get Ensnaring Bridge down. Opponent counterspells our Inquisition, it looks like. That's fine. We'll play Bridge. We are one land away from activating Inventor's Fair to get a Lantern of Insight, and then we should have a fairly easy victory from there. They have one of the... Flashback, Memory, Deluge things. Okay, the Spreading Seas are thing. A little unfortunate, but... We can't really avoid it if they're just playing a bunch of Spreading Seas. Mill you again. We get it to Fairy. Cast a Ghoul Caller's Bell, pass the turn. We can't control their top decks very well, but Castle Vantress does basically nothing. Since we can just mill however many cards they put on top anyway. We each mill. Got a Stone Forge Mystic. Mill you. Got another Stone Forge Mystic. We draw Thought Seize. Plays an Archmage's Charm to draw some cards. Opponent plays a Jace. That's a little unfortunate. It's not a Teferi, at least, so that's good. Beach Mill. Mill you. Untap. Concealed Courtyard. Pass the turn. I would have thought that they would brainstorm with Jace. I don't really know why they wouldn't. But they're just fate sealing us. I guess they're racing for the kill with it, but. It's sort of puzzling either way. We mill a swamp, we mill our opponent's Esper Sentinel. We mill a Sea Crumb Coast. Collective Brutality. Let's Collective Brutality you. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna counter it. Archmage's Charm. Okay. Let's pass. I want to leave 
thought sees for if we get a pithing needle. We need to get a pithing needle so we can turn Jace off. Potent. Tap some mana, untap some mana. What sideboard stuff do we want to bring in against them? I guess Thoughtseize, Surgical, maybe Spellskite, and Pithing Needle, since they play so many Planeswalkers. Opponent Scries with Castle Vantress. Well, we're not going to let you scry that much. Opponent scries both to the bottom. Okay, I don't care about that. Opponent fate seals us. I think I'm going to use Codex Shredder to get back Academy Ruins soon. Gonna mill with Ghoul Caller's Bell. We get a counter spell from our opponent's deck. Mill you. We get a Celestial Colonnade. Untap. We draw Ancient Stirrings. What does Jace ult at? Jace ults at. 12. So we have a couple turns. Let's thought seize our opponent. Hopefully Ancient Stirrings can get us a Lantern. Archmage's Charm, Archmage's Charm, Solitude. Archmage's Charm can gain control of Codex Shredder if it wants to. That's kind of annoying. Let's get that. Let's Ancient Stirrings. Yep. Ancient Stirring shows us Codex Shredder, Pixis, and Blooming Marsh. I guess we get another Codex Shredder. Any order. Play Codex Shredder. Pass the turn. Opponent activates ca uh, Castle Vantress on their upkeep. Puts two cards on the bottom. That's fine. Opponent Jace is at us. Let's... Activate Ghoul Caller's Bell. Milled Inventor's Terror, that's sort of unfortunate. Mill our opponent. Mill our opponent. Untap. We draw another Ensnaring Bridge. Let's... Hmm. Let's pass the turn. Opponent Castle Vantresses. So if we pop Codex Shredder to get back Academy Ruins, they can Archmage's Charm. Our other Codex Shredder. And then we're in sort of a bad spot because they can mill us. But they have to see that line, I guess.
Let's mill each of us. Let's activate Codex Shredder, target Academy Ruins. One, two, three, four, five. Untap. Play Academy Ruins. Hmm. <laughs> How do I play around this? Let's pass the turn. Opponent draws. Opponent targets us with Jace. Let's mill with Ghoul Collar's Bell. Mill to Prismatic End. Okay. Ensnaring Bridge and Glimmer Void go into our deck. We don't have any lanterns. We can't get them this game now. Our opponent's drawing cards with Archmage. Our opponent's targeting us with Archmage's Charm, so we draw cards. Okay, we draw two. We have an Academy Ruins. So, like... I'm not certain what you're trying to do. Let's go to... Set Stop on our upkeep. Fuck! No! Oh my god! I'm so bad at this game. Holy fucking shit. Oops. Let's hit our opponent with the oops. <laughs> Fuck. Alright. That game still could have gone either way. We didn't have another Pithing Needle because our deck got exiled. So our opponent would be able to keep using Jace, and our opponent would have been able to get to Fairy eventually, but if I hadn't done that by accident... Um, if I hadn't done that by accident, I think I would have at least had more, a chance still because I could have Academy. I could have, but what my plan was was at the end of their turn, activate Codex Shredder, get Surgical Extraction, Surgical their Archmage's Charm, Uh, untap on my upkeep, activate Academy Ruins, put a Codex Shredder on top, and then hopefully just do that a bunch of times for a really long time. But, oh well. Hey, okay. So let's bring in Thoughtseize, Surgical, Spellskite, Pithing Needle, and I think Assassin's Trophy too, because Prismatic End isn't actually that good. Uh, I can't, I think I want one Prismatic End, in case they have Stony Silence or something. But I'm mostly counting on them not having that, I think. We can also cut... Let's cut one Ensnaring Bridge. Well, maybe not. I'll think about that a bit more. I like all the Hand Disruption stuff. Pithing Needle's good. Maybe I get rid of one Ghoul Caller spell. One Ensnaring Bridge, one Collective Brutality. Since I'm not likely to be neg anything. Yeah, I think that's fine. 
I'm more scared of their planeswalkers than their creatures, so I think Ensnaring Bridge can take a bit of a backseat. I'll try this. It's not the best hand, but it has a lot of disruption. Alright, Blooming Marsh. Thought sees you. What do we see? Stoneforge Mystic and Spreading Seas. Alright, let's take Stoneforge Mystic. Our opponent does not have a very exciting hand, but they have a million lands, so they'll be able to play all their top decks as they, as they get them. We draw Prismatic End. Let's Ancient Stirrings. Get a Lantern of Insight. Any order. Play Concealed Courtyard, play Lantern of Insight. Opponent has its a fairy on top. And we have a Pixis on top, so we should be able to get the combo together pretty quickly here. Opponent cracks because they don't want to fairy. Oh, they cracked in main phase. Okay, that's fine. Spreading seas, that's fine. Yep, yep. We untap, draw Pixis. There's a Glimmer Void on top of our deck. Let's Thought Seize you. I think I'd rather get rid of Stoneforge Mystic here since it provides a clock. Play Spire of Industry, play Pixis. Yeah, and I can just Prismatic End to Fairy if that becomes important. There's a Counterspell on top of our opponent's deck. Opponent plays to Fairy. It's going to target our lantern. Let's get rid of the counter spell. That's fine. We draw another lantern. Play lantern. Opponent's got a castle vantress on top. We have a thought seize on top. Prismatic end to fairy. White, blue, black. Pass the turn. Opponent draws Castle Vantress. Has a counterspell on top of their deck. We don't need Thought Seas since they just have lands in their hand. We're going to draw an Inquisition anyway and keep flooding them. We have an Ensnaring Bridge on top, that's not bad. Pass the turn. I'll keep Inquisition in case they ever draw a counterspell. So we can just get rid of it. Opponent of fetches. They want a prismatic end. We will exile your top deck. We're fine with them getting that counter spell. We, however, don't want them to get that shark typhoon. All right. So the Inquisition is already useful. It's going to help us resolve this Codex Shredder here. And I might do a cut here. If so, I will see you in a few seconds. One minute later. All right, cool. Let's play another one. All right, so game three. This hand looks a lot like the one that we had last game. Glimmer Void is not great, but these other cards are fine. We'll keep it. I think the key to beating control decks with Lantern is having a hand with a couple hand disruption spells. Because the nice thing against playing about playing against Blue White is it kind of takes them a while to set up decently well. Let's 
Inquisition you. You can draw. Opponent has Batter Skull, Counterspell. Alright, we'll take Counterspell since it's the one we can take. <laughs> I'm probably going to go ahead and Prismatic end their Esper Sentinel next turn, but they'll get another card draw out of it, so that kind of sucks. Hmm. No counterspell, please. Okay, cool. Now hopefully they can't get rid of our talisman because that would be quite a blowout. Okay, cool. Pass the turn. What's our opponent got? Probably about to thought seize them again. Draw the spire of industry, okay. Let's lead on a thought seize. Opponent has all lands. Beautiful. Tap for a green. Anciently stir. Get Codex Shredder. Any order. Cast Codex Shredder. Play Spire of Industry. Anciently stir. We will get... That's kind of unfortunate we didn't get a... Lantern there. Let's just get Pithing Needle, I guess. We can name one of their Planeswalkers with that. Pass the turn. Opponent fetches. Draws a card. I wish we had a lantern. Alright, let's mill you. Mill to stone forge. We drew a lantern. Alright, let's get lantern down. See if they drew a counterspell randomly. They have a counterspell on top of their deck. Okay, cool. Opponent concedes. Pretty clean, pretty clean. Alright, round four, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it says I hit record at least, so fingers crossed this time. We have Lantern, Needle, Needle, Inquisition. We have Mana Fixing. I don't think it's worth mulliganing this. So let's keep our opponent mulligans to six. We need, we need to draw like a Codex Shredder or something soon. And then eventually we'll need Ensnaring Bridge, of course. Spire Bluff Canal. Hmm. I think I want to go ahead and get Lantern down before they could have Counterspell up. We have a bridge on top. They have another island. Opponent has a polluted delta on top of the deck. We untap. Let's play concealed courtyard, play pithing needle. Gonna name polluted delta. I think I'm going to wait and cast Ensnaring Bridge along with Inquisition at some point. Once I get to turn 4, I think. Opponent has a Lightning Bolt on deck on top. And they drew an Expressive Iteration. They have a Dragon Rage Channeler on top now. Opponent's going to let us play Ensnaring Bridge, it looks like.
I'm not sure if I trust that. Opponent plays Ragavan. We draw Llanowar Wastes. Hmm. I guess they have Scalding Tarns, probably. They could also have Mishra's Bobble. But I think it's more likely that they have Scalding Tarn. I think it's fairly likely that they have Forces too, so I kind of want to wait on the Inquisition still. They might have like a one of Prismari command somewhere in their deck too. We'll see. They get our concealed courtyard. We're gonna draw land still, unfortunately. Well, like we haven't seen them draw any counter spells. We gain a life. We have another bridge on top. I guess we gotta go for the old Inquisition. Opponent bolts us. I assume they're keeping bolt on top. They get rid of it for some reason. Okay. <coughs> Opponent bolts us again. All right. Merktide Regent, Unholy Heat. All right, they don't have a counter spell. We get rid of Unholy Heat, which doesn't really matter. We play Spire, we play Bridge. Ragavan gets to hit us, but not for much longer, hopefully, unless we draw more lands. We'll get to pop in Vinter's Fair if we want to. Academy Ruins on top. Not the best. Means Ragavan gets to hit us again. That's a little unfortunate. Opponent considers. Yep. All these pop up windows are very confusing. <laughs> Get that over here, I guess. Get that over here, get that over here. Opponent plays Merktide, it does nothing. Alright, we untap. Gain a life. Play Academy Ruins. Pass the turn. We got another freaking land on top. Opponent hits us for three. Yep. We have a Pixis on top now. That's good news. Opponent plays Merktide. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, no effects. I want to draw the Pixis. Let's play it. They have a counter spell? Oh, yeah, they have a force of negation. Okay, that's fine. We have a Codex Shredder that's going to be on top in a second anyway. Play Blooming Marsh. Pass the turn. The opponent can hit us for one with Dragon Rage Channeler, but that doesn't matter all that much. Plays Expressive Iteration. Exiles a land with it. Plays another DRC. 
Hits us for one. Not all that scary. We go back up to 10, play Codex Shredder. Play Lana War Wastes. Pass the turn. Well, opponent's in the danger zone. I'm going to fast forward here, assuming that I win this game. Okay, well, unfortunate. <clears throat> Let's bring in I think a couple of welding jars. Maybe a spell skite. Spell skite does block Ragavan real well. Thought seam uh, not thought seems probably. Maybe surgical. Grafdigger's cage doesn't seem great. Spell sky seems okay. What do we want to take out? Like one prismatic end. I don't want to take that much out, really. I feel like now that I know what I'm working against, it might be a bit easier. But we'll just have to see. Get rid of one ghoul caller spell. Just bring in two welding jars, take out a prismatic end and a ghoul caller spell. I think that's probably fine. Having the DRCs online for so long is probably what let our opponent wind up getting a win there. I don't know if I could have played that differently to where it would have mattered at least. We'll keep this. We've got Disruption, Welding Jar, and Snaring Bridge, so it's not that bad at the very least. Still need to get their top decks away, but... All right, Brazen Bar, we're down. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I don't place Ragavan. Play a Concealed Courtyard. Pass the turn. I think I want to wait until turn four and go Thought Season 2 and Snaring Bridge again. Most likely. Opponent gets a Spire of Industry, plays a DRC. Okay. Play Lanowar Wastes, pass the turn. We're a bit flooded again. Hopefully that'll stop soon. Opponent plays Fiery Islet. That's a good Pithing Needle target. After Engineered Explosives, of course. Opponent gets a Codex Shredder. Do they play it? I assume they would. Yeah, they do. Makes sense. They can get back a Brazen Borrower, so that's kind of annoying. Counterspells. Let's see if they have another counterspell. Play Spire. Play Bridge. See what happens. Alright, we got it down. Our opponent still gets to hit us this turn, unfortunately. 
and Codex Shredder. Well, Ragavan Steel and Codex Shredder is actually very annoying. Because that can not only get Brazen Borrower back, but if we just run out the Lantern of Insight, it gives them a huge advantage. Maybe this is just a bad matchup because all the because of all the surveil and draw effects that they have, they can kind of fight through our lantern lock. Hmm. Weird, weird. Opponent gets a pithy needle, Jesus. Probably needles welding jar. Yeah, this is awful. Ragavan's kicking our ass right now. Game 1 was way closer than this. Yep, name's Welding Jar. Good lord. Do they have a kill spell for Bridge now? They have an Engineered Explosives. Jesus. Well... This match, game one was reasonable, but this game's been kind of ridiculous. Yep. We draw. Yeah, I'm calling it. Because even if we top deck a bridge there, they can still have burn spells, and we know that they have a Codex Shredder that can get Brazen Borrower back, or Engineered Explosives back, so. All right, round five with Lantern Control. I'm currently 2-2. Two, two. I should be 3-1 if I played a bit quicker. <laughs> Hopefully I can redeem myself and still get my play points back for this. Otherwise I'll have to self-flagellate or something. This hand seems reasonable. We have Ancient Stirring, so I can hope that that gets a lantern or a bridge. However, we are on the draw, so that might make it complicated. Let's keep. We draw Prismatic End. Our opponent plays the other half of a Glass Pool Mimic. I wonder what that means that they're playing, because they're not playing... Hmm. Let's lead on the Thought Seize. They're not playing a Companion, so they're not playing a Yorion deck with this, so it makes me think maybe Merfolk. Hey, there's Merfolk. Alright, well... Chalice on 2 kicks our ass. <laughs> so, or Chalice on 1, rather. 4-2 kicks our ass. So, we gotta take that. And I just need to look for a bridge now. Cause, hey, there's the bridge. <laughs> okay. For a second there we didn't have green mana, but now we do again. Then we play... Let's... Let's anciently stir. Take... Lantern of Insight. Getting a land might have been the right choice there, just to make sure that we can empty our hand a bit faster for bridge, but... Side Shaper's a 2-2, and I don't think... Once they play a Lord, none of their things are going to be 1-1s, one -one, so we shouldn't have to worry about getting Prismatic End out of our hand immediately. And Lantern will sort of find mana fixing for us eventually. I like how they fixed our mana for Academy Ruins, that was kind of nice. Opponent plays Sylvan. What cards did we see? So the only card that we know about in their hand is Lord of Atlantis, they have two unknowns. We drew another Prismatic End, that's kind of unfortunate. Let's play Lantern of Insight, since they know about it. Play Codex Shredder. Play Pixis. And I don't want them to draw Master of the Pearl Trident. And I'm fine with them drawing an island. And I'm glad that we're drawing Glimmer Void because I want to be able to get a, a Prismatic End out of my hand. 
opponent has force of negation on top. So they are playing main deck forces. But they just played two lords, so we know that they can't cast one. They hit us for a bunch. Merfolk seems like it would be a decently easy matchup. We draw Clemmer Void. Thoughtseize on top of our deck. Probably going to get rid of that. Let's... Prismatic End, Tide Shaper. Yes. Okay. Oh, it has Ward 1. Eh, I don't care. I just want the Prismatic End out of my hand anyway. Alright. So we still have blue mana. <laughs> no matter what. Time plays Aether Vial. They have one card in hand that we don't know about. I'm going to mill Waterlogged Grove to keep that nice and easy. And I'll probably just fast forward now after I thought sees them to confirm that they don't have anything. Yep, take force. Alright, fast forwarding now. Alright, that's that game. Let's bring in... Hmm. What is even good? Welding Jar doesn't do much, Leyline doesn't do much, Void Mirror does practically nothing, Torpor Orb I don't think is that useful, maybe Spell Skite's worth it because it stops like Brazen Borrower, Pithing Needle I don't think does much, maybe I bring in Assassin's Trophy, although I'm not sure, I'm not completely sold on it yet. Definitely like Spell Skite though. Let's get rid of one Ghoul Caller spell. Prismatic End seems really good since they're playing the... Yeah, since they're playing the Chalices, I want Assassin's Trophy. And Prismatic End is very good because of that, too. We can cut... One Thoughtseize, since all their stuff is like three or less. And they're also fairly... Uh, aggressive. Yeah, let's do it like that. And see what happens. We didn't get a Surgical on them last game, so we didn't get to see if they have any weird cards that we're not expecting, but if we fire one off this game, we should be able to tell pretty easily. Prismatic End, Assassin's Trophy, Pithing Needle, Codex Shredder. This seems fine. It doesn't have a fast lock, but it can really stop them from playing quickly. So let's keep. Because I can Needle Aether Vial, assuming that they play one pretty quickly. Yeah, they play Aether Vial. I can go ahead and turn that off. They're playing mono blue, so they probably brought in like Brazen Borrowers, but I doubt they have that much other interaction. They might have like Hercules Recall too. Alright, turn off Aether Vial. The other thing to Pithing Needle was Waterlogged Grove, I think. I don't think I saw anything else. Yep, yep. Pound plays a Mutavault. Plays a Chalice on one. Let's play Blooming Marsh. I think I want to leave Collective Brutality for removal. I think I'll just pass the turn here. I might wind up Assassin's Trophying the Mutavault if activating it is all they do this turn. But we'll see. Opponent plays Cavern on Merfolk. Opponent plays Tide Shaper. It can't be countered. That's a pretty cool combo. Okay. All 
All right. We have an island. Opponent passes. We draw Pixis. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Chalice. Just go white, blue. See if our opponent wants to force it or something. They do not. Play Codex Shredder. Pass the turn. I think I'm just going to start aggressively milling my opponent with Codex Shutter in case we draw a Surgical. And also because I'm pretty sure Merfolk doesn't have any graveyard shenanigans, man deck, or sideboard. Unless they're playing something I'm very unaware of. Opponent hits us for three. We are going to kill the shit out of that Master of the Pearl Trident. Milieu. We draw Pirate Spell Bomb. Let's go. Collective Brutality with Escalate. Reveals Hand. Neg two, neg two. See if this draws a force out. Real hand, neg two, neg two, black, and a blue, and we'll just get rid of Pixis since it's not doing much. See if they want to force this. If they do, they don't. Glass Pole Mimic, Lord of Atlantis, Silvergill Adept. Okay. That explains their slow roll. We'll play Pirate Spell Bomb so we can kill the Lord. <clears throat> kill the Lord if they try to go for it. <sighs> so we still need a bridge pretty soon because they do have a lot of creatures. But we have a decent amount of removal for now. Hits us for two. I'm just going to go ahead and shock this. If they want to play the Lord out, they don't know about Assassin's Trophy, so we can still kill it. And that works out fine. It reduces their clock by a pretty decent amount. Playing Tempo Lantern versus Merfolk wasn't necessarily on my list of things to do today, but... I guess things happen sometimes. Opponent... Play Silver Gill. That's fine. The draw a card. Let's mill you. Inquisition you. Take Lord of Atlantis. Pass the turn. Opponent must not have had much uh, in the way of sideboard cards if they kept in Merfolk Trickster. Because, like, it's only very good. It's only good in the very niche situation of us playing uh, Spellskite. And we do have one, but we don't have one right now. Opponent copies their Silvergill Adept to draw a card. That's fine. We would still like to draw a bridge soon. Really, any time would be good. Lantern would also be fine right now. I wouldn't complain. We mill another lord. We're really good at milling blind. Play Talisman of Hierarchy. Pass the turn. I'm probably just going to Assassin's Trophy of Silvergill here. We'll see. Kind 
plays the fourth Lord of Atlantis. <laughs> Alright, so we're Assassin's Trophying that thing. Opponent plays Mute Vault. I assume crews up the one of the Mute Vaults. They guessed correctly. Alright, let's trophy that. Black, green, take six. See if we draw an ensnaring bridge. If not, we are dead. We could also draw exactly ancient stirrings into bridge. But they have eight power on board, so we will just die otherwise. We draw. Ensnaring bridge. <laughs> All right, do you have a, fo a uh, counter spell opponent? We milled a force, so you're down at least one. All right, we're alive for now. We still need to get a lantern situation in play, but we're very not dead right now, and that counts for something. This codex shredder has been putting in work. Opponent cast an ether vial. Yep. We mill you. We got another force. <laughs> we draw another bridge. Unless they have Hercules recall, we might have just won the game now. We'll see, I guess. They didn't concede to it. Put it takes up file. Draws a card. Hopefully nothing good. They play land. We mill something. Hopefully something good. We mill a chalice. We did mill something good. Wow, this this codex shredder has been ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, let's Inquisition you, I guess. See what they're working with. They have at least, I think, two Merfolk Trickster and something else. They drew a Force, so we got a Force out of their hand with it, and they have two Merfolk Trickster still. We've gotten rid of three Forces. I mean, I feel pretty confident now. <clears throat> They're still getting to draw blind, but... We know what cards they have in their hand, at least. Kind of plays Obera. We Codex Shutter them. We Mill. A Merfolk Trickster. I would have been fine with them having that. We draw another Ensnaring Bridge. <laughs> Surely our opponent will concede to the third ensnaring bridge. I guess not. They must have a Hercules recall. Hopefully we can draw our thing before they draw their thing. In theory we have more of our thing, but... Sometimes things are surprising in this game. Sometimes things are surprising like how I... Lost two out of three games against Burn, where really I won three games against Burn. All right, opponent has Hercules Recall. <sighs> I knew it was coming. All right. Do I want to change the sideboard at all? Leyline of Sanctity answers Hercules Recall, but that is literally the only thing that it does. So I can't imagine that it's correct to bring it in. I think I just leave it as is and run it back. Hopefully draw a lantern and resolve it at some point. Well, this has lantern and it has bridge. I guess we gotta keep this. <laughs> The sand seems pretty decent. We want a Codex Shredder effect, and we want at least one more land, but other than that, I think we're in business. Let's go ahead and play Lantern of Insight. 
We're going to draw a Thought Seize. Our opponent's going to draw a Master of the Pearl Trident. This way we can get some extra information before we start disrupting their hand. Opponent has an Aether Vial on top. We have a Blooming Marsh on top. Okay, that's our third land, so that's good. Spire of Industry. Thought sees you. Opponent has a chalice, which is probably what we're, what we're taking here. Other than that, they have a lot of things we don't really care about. I think I want to get... the Chalice of the Void, and then the Tide Shaper so that they can't take us off of white mana. Because I don't really care about Sylvan. Alright. Thoughts use your Chalice. Inquisition you. Yes. Inquisition your Tide Shaper. Our opponent's going to draw an Aether Vial. They have one land in their hand. So they're kind of mana screwed right now. Or at least it's possible that they will be. Yeah, they are a little bit. But they're going to have an Aether Vial. I might just Prismatic end the Aether Vial to stop that from happening. Put in place a Master of the Pearl Trident. Okay. We untap. We're going to draw a lantern. Let's go ahead and get bridge down before they could possibly draw force next turn. We're going to get hit for two, but that's not the end of the world. And if they somehow misplay and play their Lord of Atlantis before they go to combat, okay. We get hit by a grizzly bear that's cleverly disguised as a merfolk. So we have a million lanterns this game, but we don't have any codex shutters. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting. It's the opposite situation that we had last time. Huh. Alright. Play a swamp. Play a lantern of insight. I will keep prismatic end in hand for now, I think. Yeah, I don't care that much about Vile compared to getting rid of a uh, Okay, they have force that they're about to draw. Hmm. Should I shuffle my own deck? Is what I'm wondering. I think I should. Because I really don't want to draw another land right now, honestly. And I can cast anything else. Opponent has a force. I'm going to shuffle my own deck. I get a collective brutality with it. I'm not against collective brutality. I'm going to get force out of their hand. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of Aether Vial. So they establish their board a bit less quickly and I'm out of cards in hand so I don't have to worry about that anymore. Pass the turn. They have a bunch of big scary merfolk that can't attack me, so I only care about them drawing a Hercules Recall at this point. There's a Hercules Recall. They have another Silver Gill, right? I think. Let's shuffle their deck. Alright, we're fine with them drawing the third Sylvoon. 
pays off to have a million lanterns, I guess. We draw ancient stirrings, hopefully we get... Okay, we, we're at least going to get a ghoul caller spell. <laughs> yeah, we get ghoul caller spell. Any order. We have an, another ancient strings on top. Play ghoul caller spell. We don't care. We don't care about glass pole mimics, so we pass the turn. I'm going to fast forward from this point until I either win or lose. <laughs> See you then. Hooray! <laughs> Yay, alright, I got my entry back. We went 3-2 with an asterisk, where we we really went 4-1. <laughs> I'm just stupid. And that was a lot of fun to play. I was surprised with how well this deck did without the uh, Urza Sagas and without the Mishra's Baubles. I definitely recommend checking it out. I'm going to go ahead and open my treasure chest and see what I get. Bop, 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 bop. Yes. Yes. We got a persist. I might actually use that. And play points, which is really what I'm after here. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you in the next set of videos. I don't know if I'm going to be doing uh, mostly more of these big one video leagues or if I want to do multi sets, but. We'll see what happens. All right, I'll see you then. Hey everyone, shoe nice again. Well, basically, go subscribe to Tez's YouTube channel. And for those who made it to the end of the video, thank you.